We continue our Blues team coverage this morning with the power of two sports director, Martin Kilcoin, who is joining us now on the phone. Good morning, Martin. Thanks for getting up early with us. You know, you touched on this briefly in the TKO the other night, saying that Doug Armstrong said the Ruby would be fine as long as he kept winning. So, I mean, how big of a surprise is this? I, I would say it just on the surface, it's shocking because Ruby's extremely popular. As Chris pointed out, he's the coach that won the Stanley Cup. But I think as this season has sort of been a struggle, especially against some of the worst teams. They really played poorly against bad teams. I think the conversation has sort of been growing, but I think both things can be true, that it's a wildly unpopular move with the fan base. You go on social media, almost all of the anger, frustration is pointed at Doug Armstrong, who is the boss, who did the firing and also did the hiring of Baruby. But I think it can be true that it's largely unpopular, but it's also really common in the NHL. Coaches get fired all the time, and Berube was now in his sixth year, which is an eternity by NHL standards, and sometimes they feel the message gets stale. You know, I'm of the opinion that the roster just isn't that good. Even Armstrong himself admitted going into the year, if everything goes well, if everything breaks our way, maybe we'll finish third in our division, and we'll just sort of just get into the playoffs. So I'm a little confused, because I think the bar for the season was actually set pretty low, by Armstrong, and right now they're kind of hovered around 500. However, in the past, when they fired coaches, and Armstrong's been there, this is the fourth time it's happened, the previous three, when they fired the coach, including when they hired Baruby, the team turned it around and went on a run. There is sort of a, a trend in the NHL when a new coach comes in, it's a new voice, it's a new message, and the players sort of get the urgency because the last guy got fired. So I would just say on the surface, Baruby, because of his status, being fired has a shock value to it. But around the league, I think people kind of saw it coming. And I will tell you, I texted with Ruby last night, and he just said, all good, time to move on, which I think he even recognized, hey, it's not working. and He'll be fine. He'll coach somewhere again. He might end up on TV. But uh, I think maybe, maybe both sides will say it was just time for a change. Absolutely, Martin. Let's talk about this, this new coach coming in. You're, you're saying, you know, maybe there'll be a, a new start for him. Drew Bannister, the interim head coach. What do we know about him? Well, he's been with their large, their uh, top affiliate, which is out of Springfield, Mass. That's the AHL. Uh, he did play in the NHL, and he's been coaching for a while at the minor league level. It's sort of like when the Cardinals would hire a Mike Schilt or an Ali Marmol. You may say, now, who is this guy? But it's somebody that's been in their system. Even Craig Berube, when he got his shot with the Blues initially, it was at the minor league level. He was coaching the Chicago Wolves for a couple of years. That's when Armstrong decided, hey, I like this guy. They brought him onto the staff, eventually promoted him, of course. So he did play in the league, um, been around the game for a long time. And this is kind of what the NHL does. They will find guys who've been working their way through the system and promote them at some point. I just don't believe that he's going to be able to pull off a miracle, which there's players that are highly paid, like Tory Krug and Jordan Cairo, who are largely underperforming. And I think Craig Ruby, if he's being honest, or on the lie detector would say, Good luck with this bunch, but we'll see. Sometimes there's a spark with the new guy. Um, but I, I think I think this team is kind of confusing because they're, they said that they're in a retool. They're not rebuilding, but they're sort of in a transition year. So that's the question I'll ask. Doug Armstrong is going to talk at 1030 out at their 10-team community ice center. And I remember we asked him this. He fired Ken Hitchcock, who's one of his best friends. And Armstrong, who could be real cold and calculating, actually was – crying on the day that they fired Hitchcock. Uh, so, but I do want to ask him, if this team wasn't expected to do much, you know, why, why fire the coach? Absolutely. All right. Well, we'll hear more, as you mentioned, from Doug Armstrong this morning. And, of course, you'll be following this throughout the day on our sports segments. Thank you so much, Marty, for getting up with us. You bet, guys. Good to talk to you. Okay.